this class we are going to see velocity analysis of uh, a slider crank mechanism by using instantaneous center method. So we already seen what is instantaneous center and how to do velocity analysis by using instantaneous center method in the previous video. So here we will see how to do velocity analysis for a slider crank mechanism. So I am taking a slider crank mechanism like this. So this is crank. I am doing velocity analysis for this slider crank mechanism. So in a velocity analysis, velocity of one link will be given to you and you are required to find velocity of other links inside the mechanism. So here I am assuming, so velocity of one link is known to you, so that is velocity of this crank is known to you. So I am calling velocity of crank as some omega. So I want to find out velocity of other links inside this particular mechanism. So I am calling this as link number 1. So this is link number, crank is link number 2. So connecting rod is link number 3. So piston is link number 4. So you can see cylinder, so this is fixed link, that is link number 1. So I am doing velocity analysis by instantaneous center method. So I am locating the instantaneous centers. You can see link 1 and link 2 are connected by turning pair here. So therefore I can say, so I1 2 lies here. 2 and 3 are connected by turning pair here. So I2 3 lies here. So 3 and 4 are connected by turning pair here. So therefore common instantaneous center for link 3 and 4 so will lie here. And you can see, so 1 and 4, links 1 and 4. 1 and 4 is forming a sliding pair. So for sliding pair instantaneous center will lie. So at infinite in the direction perpendicular to plane of sliding. So I center will go to so infinite so in the direction perpendicular to plane of sliding. So I14 is infinite and its direction is perpendicular to plane of sliding. So I want to look at the remaining instantaneous centers and we have already seen how to look at remaining instantaneous centers. So, so draw a polygon having number of sides equal to number of links inside the mechanism. So there are four links inside this mechanism. I have drawn a polygon having four sides. So I am numbering like this. So one and two. So one, two. So I12 is already located. So 2, 3 is already located, 3, 4 is already located and I14 is already located. So what is not located is I13 is not located. So I want to locate I13. So I can locate instantaneous center I13 like this. So I13 lies on line joining 1, 2, 2, 3. So I13 lies on line joining 1, 2, 2, 3. Or I can say, so I13 lies on line joining so 1, 4, 3, 4. So it's 1, 4, 3, 4. I can go from 1, 2, 3 like this. So 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3 or 1, 2, 4, 4, 2, 3. So I13 lies on, so 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, or I13 lies on line joint, so 1, 4, 3, 4. So I am drawing a line passing through, so 1, 2, 2, 3. So 1, 2 is here, I12 is here, I23 is here. So I am drawing a line passing through I12, so I23. And similarly, so I am drawing a line, so passing through I14 and I34. So if you look at this line, so I34 is here and I14 is here. If you look at this line, this line is passing through I14 and I34. So intersection of these two lines I can say like this. I13 lies on line joining these two I centers and I13 lies on line joining these two I centers. If you look at this point, this point is common for both the lines. Therefore I can say, so I13, that is instantaneous center of link of 3 with respect to link 1 lies there. So now one more I center is not located, that is I24 is not located. I24 is not located. So I24 I can look at I24 like this. I24 I can go from 2 to 4 like this. 2 to 3 and 3 to 4. So 2 to 3, 3 to 4. Or I can say 2 to 1 and 1 to 4. So 2 to 1 and 1 to 4. I can say like this. I24 lies on line joining I23, 3, 4. Or I24 lies on line joining I12, I14. So I am drawing a line passing through 2, 3, 3, 4. So 2, 3 is here and 3, 4 is here. So I am drawing a line passing through 2, 3 and 3, 4. I have drawn a line passing through 2, 3 and 3, 4. You extend the line. So similarly, so I am drawing a line passing through 1, 2 and 1, 4. So I, 1, 2 is here. I, 1, 2 is here. And if you look at I, 1, 4. So I, 1, 4 is at infinite. I, 1, 4 is at infinite. And the direction is perpendicular to plane of sliding. Now see here I14 is at infinite in the direction perpendicular to plane of sliding. This is plane of sliding. So perpendicular to plane of sliding, this is the direction. It lies at infinite. Now see here I am drawing a line passing through I12 and I14. I12 is here and I14 is at infinite in this direction. It's at infinite in this direction. This line is going to so I14. And where I14 is at infinite. So I have drawn a line passing through I12 and I14. And if you look at I14, I14 is at infinite. And if you look at this line, this line is passing through I34 and I14. I can say like this, these two lines are meeting 
at infinite. On at infinite, I one four is lying. So where I one four is lying, so there these two lines are meeting. And these two lines are meeting at infinite. I can say I one four is at infinite. So now you can see I have drawn a line passing through I two three three four, and I have drawn a line passing through one two one four. And we have seen so I two four lies on line joining these two centers, and I two four lies on line joining these two centers. So common point for these two lines is this one. Therefore, I can say so I two four lies somewhere over here. I two four lies somewhere over here. So I want to do velocity analysis for this. Now see here. So in I center method, if you want to do velocity analysis. First, I need to locate all the instantaneous centers. I located all the instantaneous centers. So here, so velocity of one link is given to you. That is velocity of link to, link two is given to you. So velocity of link two that is crank. So I am calling it as omega two. So I want to find out velocity of other links. So first, let me calculate velocity of this slider. So our velocity of this slider is nothing but velocity of link number four. I can say like this. So velocity of link two is given to you. Velocity of link two is given to you. And you are required to find so velocity of link four. So velocity of one link is given to you, and you want to find the velocity of another link. So if you look at angular velocity ratio theorem, angular velocity ratio theorem is like this. We have already discussed. Angular velocity ratio theorem says that so if angular velocity of one link is known, so if you want to find the velocity of another link, locate common instantaneous center. So the velocity of this instantaneous center, that is common instantaneous center, related to a fixed third link, is the same. So whether this I center is a part of first link or it is a part of a second link. So velocity of one link is known to you. You are required to find out velocity of another link. So you locate common instantaneous center. You locate common instantaneous center. So common instantaneous center for links two and four is I two four. If you look at this common instantaneous center I two four, so this common instantaneous center I two four may lie on link number two or it may lie on link number four. So if it lies on link number two, it may have some velocity. If I assume it lying on link number four, it may have some velocity. So see if you look at I two four, I two four is a single point. So whether it lies on link number two or whether it lies on link number four, it would have same velocity. Why? Well, because a single point cannot have two different velocities. Now see here. So this is I two four. So this may lie on link two or link four. So if I assume, so this common instantaneous center is lying on link number two, or sometime if I assume it lies on link number four. So if I assume, so this common instantaneous center I two four, so it lies on link number two. So if I assume, so it lies on link two. So if I two four lies on link two, so what will be velocity of I two four? So if you look at link two, so this is link two, and if you look at link two, link two with respect to fixed link is rotating about I one two. Link two with respect to fixed link is rotating with respect to I one two. Link two is rotating about I one two with respect to fixed link, and if you look at I two four, if I assume I two four is a part of link two, so the shape of link two is not like this. If I assume shape of link two is something like this, if I assume shape of link two is something like this, and if you look at link two, link two at this instant with respect to fixed link, it is rotating about this point. Link two is rotating about this point. So if I want to find the velocity of any point on a rotating object, so if I assume I two four is a point on link two. And link two is rotating about I one two, and I want to find the velocity of some point that is I two four on link two. So if I want to find the velocity of any point on any rotating object, I can say velocity of any point on any rotating object is directly proportional to its distance from center of rotation. So link two with respect to fixed link is rotating about this I center. This is center of rotation, and I want to find the velocity of I two four. I can say velocity of I two four depends on its distance from center of rotation. Therefore, I can say like this: velocity of I two four is directly proportional to distance between these two points. That is, I one two and I two four. I can say like this: so velocity of I two four is equal to is directly proportional to so distance between so I one two and I two four. I two four. And since I know angular velocity of this link two, I can write like this: so velocity of I two four. Velocity of I two four is equal to. So omega two times so distance between so I one two and I two four. This is velocity of I two four. So now I know velocity of this common instantaneous center. If I assume this common instantaneous center is lying on link number two. So if I assume the com the common instantaneous center is lying on link number four. So if I assume the same common instantaneous center is lying on link number four. So if I assume so this lies. On link four. 
if I assume this guy is on link 4. So I can say like this, if you look at link 4, link 4, I can say link 4 is a slider. So if you look at link 4, link 4 is a slider. And if you look at the slider, slider undergoes pure translation. Slider will undergo pure translation. So whenever I say pure translation, so all points, all points on the link, all points on the link, so will have the same velocity. So whenever I say the body is undergoing pure translation, all the points on the body will have same velocity. So I can say identical velocity. All the points will have say identical velocities. So whenever I say same or identical velocity, velocity is a vector quantity. It should be same both in magnitude and direction. So whenever I say, so the object is undergoing pure translation, if you choose any point, so all the points should have same velocity, I can say both in magnitude and direction. So then I can say it's undergoing pure translation. So I can say like this, link 4 is a slider, slider is undergoing pure translation. Since it's undergoing pure translation, all the points on the slider, so we have same velocity. So if I assume, so I24 is a part of slider. If I assume I24 is a part of slider, I can say like this, velocity of I24 will be same as velocity of the slider. So I can write like this. So if I assume I24, it lies on link 4. So velocity of I24 will be same as so velocity of the slider. And velocity of the slider, when the slider is link number 4, I can say, so this is same as so velocity of link 4. So therefore I can write like this. So velocity of slider or velocity of link 4 is the same as so velocity of I24. And we already know what is velocity of I24. So when it was lying on, when I assumed it, it was on link number 2. So velocity of I24 was this one. And I can say like this, velocity of I24 is omega 2. So distance between, so I12 and I24. So from here, I can get velocity of the slider. So I can say like this, you locate common instant in the center. So when angle, when velocity of one link is known to you, and you are required to find out velocity of another link, you locate common instant in the center. After locating common instant in the center, so this common instant in the center, it may lie on link number 2 or it may lie on link number 4. It may lie outside both the bodies. So if I assume, so it is lying on link number 2, it will have some velocity. If I assume it lies on link number 4, it will have some velocity. So I24, if I assume it, it, it if I assume I24 is lying on link number 2, it is having some velocity. If I assume I24 is lying on link number 4, it is having some velocity. So since a single point cannot have two different velocities, the velocity that I24 is having when it lies on first link must be same as so velocity of that common instant in a center when it assumed on a second link. So since both the velocities are same, so I am equating both the velocities. So omega 2 is already given in the question. So you know omega 2. And I want to find out velocity of link number 4. So if you can find the distance between I12 and I24, so with the help of scale, if you can find this distance, so this is known to you. So from this diagram, so omega 2 is already given in the question. You can get velocity of the slider. Now you know velocity of the slider. Now we want, we want to find so velocity of connecting rod. Now we do so velocity analysis to find so velocity of connecting rod. So velocity of angular velocity of one link is given to you. That is link number two is given to you. So I want to find out angular velocity of link number three. So velocity of one link is given to you. You want to find velocity of another link. You first look at common instant in the center. First look at common instant in the center for both the links. For both this link, common instant in the center is I23. So we already know this. So this I23 can be a part of link 2 or it can be part of link 3. Now see here. So if I assume, so I23, so if it lies, lies on, so if it lies on, link 2. So if I assume this common instantaneous is lying on link 2. So we already know that. So link 2 with respect to fixed link is rotating about I12. So if I want to find out velocity of so I23, so I can write like this. So velocity of I23 will be directly proportional to its distance from center of rotation. So if it lies on link 2, link 2 is rotating about this point, that's I12. This is center of rotation. And if you look at I23, I23 is here you find the distance between these two points. So I am assuming I23 is lying on link number 2. So if I23 lies on link number 2, now I assume shape of link number 2 is something like this. Shape of link number 2 is something like this. So that I23 is a part of link number 2. 
So I two three is lying on link number two, and link number two is rotating about this point. This is center of rotation for link number two, and I want to find out velocity of this point. Therefore, I can say like this: so velocity of this point is directly proportional to its distance from center of rotation. Therefore, I can say it is directly proportional to distance from center of rotation. That is I one to I two three. So I can get velocity like this. So velocity of I two three is equal to so omega two angular velocity of link two is this one, and its distance from center of rotation. I guess it's simply r times omega. So r is this one, and omega is velocity of this thing. Now you know, so velocity of i two three if it lies on link two. Similarly, you can find so velocity of i two three if it lies on link three. So now I am assuming so i two three earlier it was lying on link two. Now I am assuming so if it lies on link three. So if I assume i two three is a part of link three, and if you look at link three, link three. At this instant, it is rotating with respect to fixed link about i13. So at this instant, link three is rotating about i13. So if I assume so i23 is a part of, so I if I assume shape of link three is something like this. If I assume shape of link three is like this. At this instant, link three is rotating about this point. If I assume shape of link three is something like this, so I can say like this. So velocity of, so that that is common instant in a sense. Velocity of i23. Will be directly proportional to its distance from center of rotation. At this instant, link three is rotating about this point. This is center of rotation, and I want to find the velocity of i two three. I can say like this: velocity of i two three is directly proportional to its distance from center of rotation. I can say it is directly proportional to its distance from center of rotation. Center of rotation is i one three, and the point I want to find velocity is i two three. I can write like this: so velocity of i two three is equal to so omega three into so. I one three into two three. So I am assuming angular velocity of link three some omega three. I don't know that. That's variable I want to find out. So and you can see if so if I two three lies on link number two, this was velocity. If I two three lies on link number three, this is velocity. Since a single point cannot have two different velocities, so both are the same. I can say like this. So omega two so into so I one two and I two three. So this is velocity of I two three if it lies on link two. So this must be equal to so omega three into distance between i one three and i two three. So this is velocity of i two three if it lies on link three. So since i two three is a single point, it cannot have two different velocities. Both must be equal. So omega two is already given in the question. I want to find out omega three. I can find the distance between i one to two three. So from the diagram, and I can find the distance between i one three two three. So from the diagram. So what is not known is omega three is not known. So from here you can find. Velocity of link number three. So once you know angular velocity of link number three, you can find out velocity of any point on link number three. So at this instant, link three is rotating with respect to fixed link about this point with a velocity omega three. You can find out velocity of any point on the connecting rod. If I want to find out velocity of this point on the connecting rod, so just find this distance. I'm calling this point as P. Just find the distance between so I one three and P. I can say like this. So velocity of point P is nothing but so omega three. Into so distance from center of rotation. So center of rotation is i13, and the point is this point. So this way you can find out velocity of any point on any of the link if you know its angular velocity. So in 2017, 2017 gate, so there was one question from velocity analysis of slider fan mechanism. So if you look at that question, so if you look at the question, the question is something like this. So they gave a slider fan mechanism. So they gave a slider fan mechanism. The door, so the length of crank is some three meters, and connecting rod is some four units. So they told that length of this crank is some three meters, length of connecting rod is some four meters. So this angle is 90 degrees. They told the angle between crank and connecting rod is some 90 degrees. So at this instant, so they told that so velocity of slider is one meter per second. Velocity of slider at this instant is one meter per second. And the question is, so what will be angular velocity of crank? So crank velocity. So they give the configuration. Generally, we do velocity analysis at an instant. So the instant is this one. When crank is perpendicular to connecting rod, so length of crank is given as three meters. Length of connecting rod is given as four meters. So velocity of the slider is given as 
one meter per second, and they ask to get so velocity of so angular velocity of crank. Angular velocity of crank. So that is the given question. So I'm drawing the same configuration here. So this is the given configuration. So I'm calling this as link number one. So this is link number two. So this is link number three, and this is link number four. So this is link number one. This is link number one. So I one two will lie here. So I two three goes here. So three and four are connected by a turning gear here. So this is link four. So I three four will lie here, and you can see one and four is forming a sliding gear. I one four so we lie at infinite in the direction perpendicular to plane of sliding. It lies at infinite. And you already know how to locate the remaining instantaneous center. So to locate I one three so draw a line passing through one two two three. So I'm drawing a line passing through one two two three. And similarly draw a line passing through so three four and one four. So where are these two lines intersect? So that gives you I one three. And similarly to locate two four so draw a line passing through two three and three four. So I'm drawing a line passing through two three and three four. This line is passing through two, three, and three, four. And similarly, draw a line passing through one, two, and one, four. One, two is here, and one, four is at infinite in the direction perpendicular to this plane. So, in the direction perpendicular to this plane. So, I am drawing a line perpendicular to this plane. So, till infinite. So, this line is going in to infinite. So, I one four is lying at infinite, and both these lines are remaining at infinite. So, where are these two lines intersect? So that gives you so I two four. So, I two four will lie here. I two four will lie here. So they gave velocity of the slider, and they are asking you to find velocity of this particular crank. So I can say like this. So I can say like this. So velocity of crank. So I need to find out, and they gave so velocity of link number four that is given as one meter per second. You look at common instantaneous center. You look at common instantaneous center. So common instantaneous center for both the links is I two four. So look at common instantaneous center. So if this common instantaneous center if it lies on link number two, so velocity of I two four. I can write like this. If it lies on link number two, and link number two is rotating with respect to fixed link about this point, that is I one two. So therefore, I can say like this: velocity of I two four is directly proportional to its distance from center of rotation. Center of rotation is this one, and the point I want to find velocity is I two four. So therefore, I can write like this: velocity of I two four. So velocity of I two four, if it lies on link two, angular velocity of link two is this one, and its distance from center of rotation is this one. You can say it's r times omega. So if I assume, so the same thing if it lies on link number four. So if you look at link number four, link number four is a slider. So therefore I can say so velocity of I two four. If I assume this lies on link number four, so it will be same as velocity of slider. So I can say if it lies on link number two, lies on link number two. So if it lies on link number four, if it lies on link number four, link number four is a slider. If I assume I two four is lying on link number four, all the points on link number four will have same velocity. Therefore, I can say velocity of I two four will be same as velocity of link four, or I can simply say velocity of slider. So velocity of link four, or I can say like this: velocity of I two four is same as velocity of link four. Velocity of link four is omega two into distance between so I one two and I two four. So velocity of link four is already given in the question that is given as one meter per second. So omega two into so distance between I one two and I two four. If you can find the distance between I one two and I two four, you can get angular velocity of link number two. Now see here. So I want to find out. So the velocity, the distance between I one two and I two four. I one two is here. I two four is here. I want to find out this this distance. If you look at the question, in the question, so they give length of crank as some three meters, and length of connecting rod is given as some four meters. So from here, so I can find out this angle. So I can write like this. So I'm calling this angle as tan tan theta. I can write as So four, so divided by three, I can say theta is tan inverse four by three. So from here you can find the value of theta, and here the theta will be coming around so fifty three point so one three degrees. So theta is so fifty three point one three degrees. So this angle I can write as ninety minus theta. So that is so thirty six point eight six. This angle is around thirty six point eight six. So if you look at this triangle, so this angle is given as 90. So this angle is 90. Therefore, this is also 90. That is given in the question. And you know length of this particular link. Length of this link is given as 3 meters. 
and I know this this angle. So from this triangle, so I can write like this. So I can write so cos 36.86 is so this is right angle. This is hypothesis, and this is adjacent side. I can say this is three meters. So divided by so distance between so one two two four. So if you simplify this, so I can say distance between I one two I two four is three. So divided by cos so 36.86. So I can say like this: the distance between these two points is so three divided by cos 36.86. Distance between I1 to I24 is three, so divided by cos 36.86. So from here I can get omega 2. So if you simplify this, you will get omega 2 as 0.2667 radian per second. So only one one thing student get confused is so how to look at I24. And now you know how to look at I24, and so why velocity of the slider will be same as velocity of I24. So we have already seen. So slider is undergoing pure translation. If I assume I24 lies on the slider, so velocity of I24 will be same as velocity of the slider. And how to find out this velocity of I24? I am assuming so I24 lying on link number two, and from there I find velocity of I24. So I get a mathematical equation like this. So from there, so one equation one unknown. So if they ask to find velocity of connecting rod, you can find velocity of connecting rod. So if they want to find velocity of any point on the connecting rod, you just find the distance of that point from center of rotation. So whenever they ask velocity of any intermediate point on any of the link, just find angular velocity of the link. If you know angular velocity of the link, and if you can find the distance of that particular point from center of rotation, so you can find the velocity of that particular point on any of the links, any of the links.